what's up guys and today I'm gonna be doing a Paul Gasol reward card review hope you enjoy all right open in the pack yeah he's an amethyst he's a 90 overall I think yeah 90 overall 2010 Paul Gasol let's look at the stats collection uh, here are the other Lakers players if you're wanting and there are their stats uh, Metal World Peace Shannon Brown and then Jordan Farmer. And here's the Paul Gasol. So he's seven foot tall, 90 offensive overall, 80 defensive overall. Seven foot tall, like I said, all right. He's got 95 standing layup, 74 driving layup, 89 post fade, that's pretty good. He's got a good post hook, good post control, okay draw foul. He's got good mid range, which is what I like about him. He has a 65 standing three, so I guess he might be able to hit one out of three, probably one out of every three sh threes you shoot with him. I don't know. His free throws, 80. That's pretty good. Ball control is very good. Passing is okay. Box out is amazing. And offensive defense are both 82, so he he'll get rebounds. Uh, 74 block, 85 shot contest. Defensive consistency is only 70, so he's got okay defense. 65 driving dunk, 45 contact, and 85 standing, so he will do dunk. He's 62 speed, so he's kind of fast, not super fast, and he's got 96 stamina. And 90 offensive, er, yeah, offensive consistency, which is amazing, so that means he's going to be uh, getting hot really quick. All right, here are his badges. Screen outlet, post spin technique, drop stepper, post uh, uh, step back pro, dream like up and under, post hook specialist, classic passer, break star, love city passer, offensive crasher, and defensive crasher. Alright, let's get right into the freestyle. So we are in freestyle, let's uh, get Paul Gasol out. Uh, where is he? Oh, that's the there he is. Get Paul Gasol out. Alright, there's his hot zone he's got. Hot zones from the mid. Alright, here we go. Two hot zones from the mid, a hot zone in the inside, and then a cold zone in the mid. So let's see if he can shoot mid range, is pretty good. His release is kind of slow. I don't really like it. Alright, there we go. That's kind of good. That's a good release. He's walking kind of slow for 62 speed. Alright. Let's go. That's a bad thing. He only has like 50 acceleration, so. Range. Alright. Actually, I kind of do like his release. Come on, you gotta make that. Uh, let's try to post fade away. Post fade away. Alright. Pretty good. Try another one in his cold zone. Alright. Pretty good. Alright, I want to try shooting a 3 with him since he's only got 65 3 I want to see if he can make it. See, like I said, even though he only has 65 3, he'll probably be able to make him, but I do not suggest shooting 3s with him. 65 is not good enough to shoot with him. See, he can hit him. He won't make it every time, but. There's another one. Dang, that's kind of cash. Jeez. Switch if it does go in. Alright. So, uh, the question is is this card worth it to y'all? Um, in my opinion, if you have free time and you, and you don't have anything else to do, it's worth it. But if you don't want to spend, like, well, to get the card, you have to play 16 games, and each game takes about 24 minutes. Anywhere between 24 minutes and like 32, 35 at the longest, 24 at the shortest, and you have to play 16 of them. So you're gonna put in multiple, multiple hours of gameplay just to get this card. And that's not even if, that's if you win every single one. If you lose like one per each, then you have to play 20 instead of 16. So that just makes it even longer. So. If you have a good enough team, they sh the teams are pretty easy to beat, to be honest. You have to face the Thunder, the Celtics, and I forgot the other two teams. But the other two teams are easy, but the Thunder and the Celtics are the kind of hard ones. But, I mean, they're pretty easy though. They shouldn't be very hard to beat. So, 
there's a shoot around with him. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh.